Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and I, um, I appreciate the opportunity to in introduce you to the CCRM commercialization uh, model. Uh, CCRM is one of Canada's networks of centers of excellence in translation, one of 20 um, organizations that are, have been created to, um, to create the right kind of network and ecosystem for, for commercialization. It's a specific program of the government. We received $15 million two years ago um, that has been matched by uh, industry and institutions um, on the back of 100 million or hundreds of millions in investment in infrastructure and regenerative medicine in Canada. Uh, we're based in Toronto in the Mars Discovery District. Mars stands for Medical and Related Sciences. Uh, we have 33 employees. Um, Two-thirds are focused on product development and validating technologies out of academic institutions. A third are business development uh, individuals. 90% of our staff are, have PhDs. Uh, we have 10,000 square feet of uh, core development space provided to us by our institutional partners um, and, and equipment, and we will operate a 20,000 square foot GMP facility that uh, will be constructed uh, in 2014. We have six institutional partners and an industry consortium of 30 plus companies. Our mission is a global mission. It's to be a, a hub, uh, a network of, of regenerative medicine technology and cell therapy development. Um, the vision for our network um, is to be the preferred destination for people and capital uh, and uh, clinical trials and ideas in, in regenerative medicine, to be a rich and vibrant startup community, to um, focus on sustainability and revenue generation, to be internationally recognized as a regenerative medicine technology developer, kind of a patent house in the space, and to be a dynamic, exciting environment in which to build a career in regenerative medicine at this interface between industry and academia. Our, uh, our plan to build, uh, to bridge this commercialization gap that everyone talks about with a specific focus on product development and clinical and preclinical validation really comes down to three strategic thrusts and three core outcomes. Um, the outcomes are to be sustainable, so to build a network that can attract, attract uh, risk capital and additional funding, um, to be uh, revenue generating over the long term, to create jobs, um, and therefore we have a focus on company creation, and to enhance health outcomes. And for us, that doesn't mean um, promising cures uh, in, this early, in these early days, but to accelerate um, uh, the advance of cell therapies to, uh, to clinical trials. Um, the strategic thrusts, uh, three strategic thrusts, are first uh, to enable product development. So we have a dedicated team um, that works within this academic infrastructure but is independent, um, that um, is uh, completely dedicated to moving technologies, advancing technologies. Um, the second strategic thrust is to integrate the excellence we have in the science with business expertise to build a, a robust network with all the pieces of the puzzle in place. And the third is to engage industry, and we do that through an industry consortium to, um, to engage industry so that they can provide the adequate market pull to balance the technology pull um, and to, uh, to co-invest in technology development and to be ready receptors for technologies that we develop at CCRM. Uh, in terms of enabling product development, our, our uh, facilities focus on three main areas. One, the cell reprogramming and cell engineering. The second are issues around cell manufacturing and scale-up to produce clinical and commercial quantities of cells. And the third is um, to uh, exploit our expertise at biomaterials. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and the, the uh, product development team really has four, or three key activities. Um, they conduct projects uh, either on technologies to advance those for either out-licensing or, or company creation. Uh, they're mandated to generate new intellectual property uh, within the facility to augment the IP that we see from our partners. And the third is to uh, incubate companies within um, our structure uh, to, so that we are not creating companies prematurely uh, and launching them with the right kind of validation and support. Um, in terms of uh, the second uh, key uh, strategic thrust of, of integrating business and scientific leadership, the, um, 
the initial ecosystem that we um, were born out of uh, was a, a very, very collaborative and uh, tight network of academics in regenerative medicine um, uh, that were formed through the stem cell network and something uh, called the Ontario Stem Cell Initiative. And both of these organizations have created a very collaborative environment uh, among the academics uh, and also got them to buy into the idea of commercialization. CCRM exists in Toronto's Discovery District, which is uh, 10 research hospitals in the University of Toronto, all within one block of each other in downtown Toronto. Um, and that environment is uh, further enhanced through the Mars Convergence Center, which is a million square feet of, um, of space for um, not only uh, research, but also venture capital, banks, other service providers. It's a real uh, successful convergence center in downtown Toronto. And another organization within the, the community is Mars Innovation. And Mars Innovation brings together the tech transfer offices of 17 institutions in Toronto so one of the founding um, strengths of CCRM is all of the intellectual property in the, um, in the community comes to CCRM that's related to regenerative medicine for us to review and, uh, and, um, and suggest a, a commercialization pathway uh, for it if it's promising technology. So this, uh, this um, founding ecosystem um, is composed of a strong pipeline uh, of, of intellectual property and clinical trials uh, the collaboration of leading Canadian institutions representing a majority of the activity in the space, um, incubator and accelerator support through the Mars Convergence Center, and of course the buy-in of the uh, leaders, the academic leaders in the space. Uh, now we've augmented that um, by um, bringing together the scientific leaders through something we call the Founding Advisory Board. So these are the, uh, because we're taking the technology out of the hands of the scientists um, and moving it forward, uh, we want to make sure that they're heavily involved in what we do, so we have an advisory board there. Our SAB is a, a strategic advisory board of international leaders in the space. Our board of directors is composed uh, mostly of industry leaders. Uh, and our commercialization review committee um, are, is the group that advises the board on the investments that we make in, in the space. And I'll talk about the industry partners in a second. Um, so this is uh, our board of directors is chaired by Greg Bonfilio, uh, who's from, uh, from California. Um, Jeff Mackay um, from Organogenesis is also on our board, and he's here. The strategic advisory board is chaired by Janet Rossent in Toronto, um, but as uh, a number of uh, uh, preeminent uh, scientists and entrepreneurs in the space uh, as part of our strategic advisory board. Uh, finally, the third strategic thrust is to engage industry and engage it very early. These are the... Um, 30 or so companies that we've put together uh, over two and a half years in an industry consortium that represents all sectors uh, in the space, uh, devices, cells as tools, reagents, and therapeutics. We think that engaging industry and, and uh, having that market pull is very, very important to building the right kind of ecosystem for both technology development and company creation. So really what it comes down to for us is aligning the culture, the interests, the mandate of academia with industry, and we do that in a, in a number of different ways. I think um, most importantly, we, we actively um, engage both the academic and industry community. We're not like a tech transfer office that waits for a, a eureka moment uh, in academia and then tries to decide what to do with that, and, and you know, one option is to create a company with one inventor and one technology and one company, which uh, is not really a sustainable model. So uh, by seeing um, a lot of uh, intellectual property in the community uh, and outside the community internationally, uh, we're able to bundle technologies into a different kind of company creation. Our engagement of industry has been about providing the market pull and getting co-development, but it really um, has, uh, Industry has come to us with problems. Not, they're not really as, as interested in our IP as engaging us in projects to generate new IP to solve their manufacturing and other problems. Uh, but the two together, uh, projects from kind of both sources, um, get put into our, uh, our development and business development team for either product or process demonstration and development, uh, business planning, diligence, IP support and management, 
And then, of course, the, the manufacturing, assay development, regulatory support associated with our bioprocessing expertise. The output of this um, is uh, our, our new technologies, products, and therapies, or, or at least more advanced investment opportunities, new intellectual property that either gets formed into new companies or gets delivered back to our industry consortium. Um, on the company creation front, um, we are looking, we source and evaluate technologies very strategically. So again, this is not a passive process where we're looking at intellectual property and trying to determine what to do with it. We are trying to determine where there are needs in the marketplace, where that uh, uh, augments the technology that we see. And the idea is to bundle intellectual property um, and, uh, and partners so that we're creating young companies with a critical mass of resources and a critical mass of intellectual property. What we really want to avoid is what I've been involved in in the past is one technology, one company, one inventor fighting for the resources with his or her colleagues, even in the same community, in the same space. We augment that, those plans with scientific and business input from our network, and then incubate those companies until a significant value inflection point or a financing within the CCRM environment, using the CCRM team in kind of quasi-company creation teams to drive these forward. And we're looking at three different types of company creations. Um, obviously, the for-profit technology companies where we bundle technologies to together, but we also are putting together our international initiatives in standards development and the bundling of IP globally and developing a database uh, in clinical trials and companies all into a not-for-profit consortium where we've built very significant relationships with ARM and CIRM and the Catapult and others. We're putting all that together into a not-for-profit. And then, and then our GMP facility and our IPS generation, we've spun out into a not-for-profit service company to provide support for our academic community. An example of a technology company that we are in the process of creating is around a technology out of the University of Toronto, Peter Zanstra's lab. Um, it's a, it's a, um, a bioprocess um, to expand hematopoietic stem cells um, where the um, factors, the secreted factors that drive the differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells is inhibited by a dilution process. Um, and so this, just this process alone enables the, you know, 11-fold expansion of long-term repopulating cells, 11-fold in about 10 days, which is very, very um, uh, impressive expansion. Uh, in the past, we would have tried to create a company around this, um, where it's really meant more for an out-licensing opportunity than a company creation, but it's a, there's a, um, a great unmet need here and a, and an, and a company creation opportunity. So what we've done is we've taken that technology and we've, uh, you know, a method that, that is typically hard to, um, to protect and enforce and, and uh, bundled that with a molecule uh, out of another Canadian institution um, that, uh, that then drives a 20-fold expansion in 10 days of the hematopoietic stem cells and are working with one of our industry consortium partners to bring all these together into a long-term manufacturing solution um, for this technology. And then have also um, are in the process of in-licensing um, technology um, around uh, a differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells to mature blood products and their expansion so that we can take advantage of the hematopoietic stem cell expansion and then uh, drive that to mature blood products as well. Now, this is a very different kind of company creation than we would have done in the past. Um, and so that is bundled again, this whole process of creating blood products and uh, transplantable material uh, out of cord blood into a wound care company as well, where there's a, a set of cells that are derived from cord blood, typically discarded cord blood units, so that we have a bundling of two companies together around uh, cord blood as a source of cells. Um, these company creations are, um, uh, there are six, five or four other company creations we're working on. Uh, one is around uh, screening technology for cardiomyocytes, a reagent company, 
uh, and endogenous stem cell um, stimulation uh, around creating brown fat versus white fat, and therefore a potential target for obesity and diabetes, a bundling of a bunch of immunotherapies in the community as well. So what of the next uh, 18 months or so, we'll uh, spin off uh, four to six companies around the technologies we've seen. So in the last 30 months, uh, we've rallied Canada's scientists and institutions around commercialization and translation. We've built an industry consortium of 30 leading global companies. We've built a team of 33 product development and business development experts. We set up core facilities, done diligence on about 130 opportunities, commenced 10 industry projects, uh, advanced six company creations, and have created a number of, uh, of specific granting opportunities with partners to advance proof of principle and company creation. Uh, and this is just a summary of slide of what we do, but I see I'm out of time, so I'll uh, answer any questions. Thank you very much.